It is Saturday evening, October 27th, and this is a 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app update on Hurricane Sandy. As of the latest official advisory from the National Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds are holding steady at 75 miles per hour. The storm is currently moving toward the northeast at 13 miles per hour, but as we can see, a gradual bend back toward the northwest and the east coast is anticipated. We have tropical storm warnings in effect for all of North Carolina and even portions of the South Carolina coast where tropical storm force wind gusts are already being recorded. Upon viewing this graphic, you may also notice that the warnings do not extend beyond the North Carolina-Virginia state line, and this is because the Hurricane Center is anticipating the storm to become post-tropical before making landfall. And that decision is somewhat controversial because there is a chance that the storm will still have fully tropical characteristics by the time the center crosses the coast. And more importantly, hurricane force winds are still to be expected along these coastal communities. And despite weather terminology, the main duty of the National Weather Service along with the Hurricane Center is to alert the public. And I think the message of a hurricane warning would get across much better than the current wording that we are using. As a matter of fact, the New York City government still has not technically shut down transit for Monday, and schools are still expected to be open. But based on the weather conditions that we anticipate for Monday afternoon heading into Monday evening, I think closings are almost inevitable, and this time should be spent prepping for the storm instead of prepping to start a new work week. As you can see, by 2 p.m. Monday, even based on the latest Hurricane Center forecast track, with the storm becoming post-tropical, it's got an H symbol there, meaning that this storm will still be packing hurricane force winds, not to mention the storm surge. Even the Boston Weather Service, located a bit more toward the north, is warning that their region could be experiencing, at the very least, hurricane force wind gusts, because the models are showing hurricane force winds in the low levels of the atmosphere, and much of this will begin to circulate its way down to the surface, especially as the convection starts to enter the coastline. Such wording is certainly justified based on the latest 18Z run of the GFS model. This is the service depiction for late Monday night into early Tuesday morning. The GFS has the center of circulation crossing the coastline across central and northern New Jersey. However, that orientation will place New York City, all of Long Island, Cape Cod, and the surrounding area in the northeast quadrant of the storm. And this is a look at the 925 millibar layer of the atmosphere. And in this circumstance, the 925 millibar height will be very close to the surface and therefore a lot of these 80 to 90 knot winds being depicted in this layer will go on to affect people in those areas if not in the form of sustained winds then certainly in gusts like the National Weather Service office in Boston was alluding to not to mention the skyscrapers especially in Manhattan that rise as high as 1500 feet up which is going to easily place those structures within this wind field that we're looking at on this current map and if those windows are not built up to code, then we're certainly going to be looking at at least some form of damage there across the skyline. I also want to emphasize the size of this storm, and that is why we're quickly going back to the current estimated surface wind field. And this is already one of the biggest wind fields I've ever seen, with those tropical storm force winds once again already beginning to make their way into coastal North Carolina. And all you have to do is extrapolate the current storm northward just to get an idea as to how many people up there are going to be impacted at the very least by tropical storm force winds. In addition, one of the keys to this is that unlike a purely tropical storm, it will be making that transition more so into a hybrid nor'easter type situation, and that's going to allow the storm to maintain its intensity a lot longer than a typical hurricane would, even beyond landfall. So interest well inland, for example, even southeast or central Pennsylvania, for example, you also may anticipate tropical storm force winds and power outages across the vast area, and that is another unique feature of this storm. To make matters worse along the coastline, in addition to those hurricane force winds, we're going to be talking about a more serious issue for interest there, and that is going to be the risk of storm surge. We've already talked about the full moon enhancing the surge, and this is the latest look at the GFS surge forecast valid 60 hours into the future, with the storm making landfall out across the central New Jersey coastline. The highest amount of water pileup is going to be near and just to the north of the center, and this does not bode well for Long Island. As you can see, we're easily talking about 7 to 9 feet of surge. Officially, the latest forecast values are 4 to 8 feet. If it's on the upper end, say near 8 feet, that will already make the surge higher than what we saw with Irene. So this is certainly a storm that we have to be taking very seriously here. Now is the time to prepare, not when the conditions are beginning to deteriorate.
In addition to the coastal flooding, we're also going to be talking about the inland flooding. And freshwater floods can be serious problems and they can cause fatalities. So this is just another parameter of the storm that we cannot ignore. This is the latest HPC five-day rainfall accumulated forecast with the highest totals occurring near the Delmarva Peninsula at roughly 11 to 12 inches. But we're still looking at well over three to possibly even eight inches inland as the low center continues to track on toward the west-northwest. Finally, in terms of model guidance, as of 18Z, this is a look at the latest model plots, and the tracks still range from as far south as the lower end of the Delmarva Peninsula to as far north as interests like Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. However, they are still slowly converging on New Jersey, and that has been the main official forecast for the last couple of days now. They are still forecasting a track over southern New Jersey. If there's any disagreement between us and the National Hurricane Center, we would place the track slightly more toward the north, However, that's really not much of a significant difference, and even based on the official forecast track, we still think that Boston and New York City would still face some rather significant weather. So this is definitely something that should not be taken lightly in those areas. And also we want to stress that if you are a resident of the Northeast, you definitely want to be paying attention to what your local meteorologists are saying, because they're the ones that are going to be most up with your weather in your locale. There's no way that we can keep up with the forecast for every single target location across the Northeast. So please keep that in mind. Last but not least, this is a look at the East Coast Infrared Satellite. And within the last few frames, you may notice that convection is returning to the center of Sandy. And we do think that the central pressure will continue to fall all the way until the time Sandy makes landfall. So this will be a strengthening storm despite starting to move out of the deep tropics. And that is because we have this trough approaching from the central United States and the trough and the hurricane rendezvousing with one another is going to allow the storm to continue to intensify as more so of a non-tropical storm coming inland. So do not take the storm lightly. We are dealing with an intensifying storm and one that already has an incredibly large size in terms of the wind field and we have multiple threats to talk about. Not to mention we didn't even talk about the snow threat in this video. We're still looking at at least one to two feet of snow in the higher elevations of western Virginia. So please keep up with the latest National Weather Service updates for more information on that. So that's the latest from us here at 28storms.com. Don't forget to frequently check out the website for more blog posts along with videos. And you can also check out this Tropical Storm Sandy News and Emergency Links page. There you can find more information regarding news along the U.S. East Coast, including the latest on evacuations and things like that. So keep it tuned to 28 Storms and the Hurricane Tracker app. We're going to keep the updates flowing all the way through landfall.